So what's up guys, Sam here, and I just wanted to create a quick video talking about something I mentioned quite a while ago, back when I purchased and unboxed that $99 Lenovo tablet, and that is the idea of using your Android smartphone or tablet devices as an external monitor for your DSLR. This video is basically gonna show you how to get it set up so that you have all the gear you need to make it actually work, and so that it's convenient and not a hindrance. I'm also gonna quickly talk about how I go about using this setup, and also some of the quirks that I've found that may help you as you look to up your external monitor game. So the things you'll need to make this setup work is a DSLR, an Android tablet or smartphone device, the app DSLR controller, which is the app that powers this entire thing, an OTG cable that fits your tablet or smartphone of choice, a USB cable that connects to your DSLR, a tripod clamp adapter that's the right size for your device of choice, a ball head mount with a hot shoe adapter, and an optional extra is a smaller tripod that's not your primary tripod. And I'll put a link to all the ones that I've purchased in the description below. From here, it's simply a matter of connecting your DSLR to your device using the USB cable and the OTG cable. And as soon as you turn on your camera, the DSLR controller app should fire itself up automatically. You may need to enable some permissions or USB debugging in your device's settings. So if it doesn't fire up automatically, make sure to check those settings out. So on top of the fact that you can now see whatever your DSLR sees on that larger display, you also actually gain control over every feature that your DSLR has on that external device. So this is great for if you're filming yourself like this sort of a shot, or even if you're just filming at a distance from your camera, you can now control things like focus if your lens has autofocus, white balance, ISO, shutter speed, and a bunch more. And once everything is set up, you don't have to walk all the way over to your camera to hit record because the button is right there for you to hit. So let's quickly mention some of the quirks involved with this setup. The main issue is that cheaper devices such as my $99 Lenovo tablet actually have to compensate with dropped frame rate and a softer focus once you hit record. Everything is nice and relatively smooth and sharp up until you hit that record button, but once you do, it's actually quite difficult to continue using it as a reference monitor. On higher end devices such as my Galaxy S6, this actually isn't an issue, but then you're having to fork out a lot more money and it may end up just being worth purchasing a dedicated external monitor. In saying that, I have actually still found plenty of use for this tablet tablet setup, but more so in the setting up and balancing of a shot before I hit that record button. I do actually use it as a reference monitor when I'm filming things like my phone for a top five Android apps video, for example, just to make sure I'm still in frame and relatively in focus. And you do actually learn to work around the softening issue, but this is obviously still something to keep in mind. So I now actually rarely use it on top of my camera and instead I put my tablet on a second tripod that I own and for shots like these, for example, it sits down here really nice and close. I can check focus and hit record without having to get up, go to my camera and sit back down and so forth. So would I recommend this setup? Yes and no. Personally, in hindsight, I kind of wish I spent a few extra dollars just to get a Nexus 7 tablet or something that has a bit more grunt to avoid that choppy frame rate issue. What I would say is that if you're in need of both an external monitor and a tablet for other purposes as well, then this is a great option for killing two birds with one stone and it will definitely save you some money. But if you are really just in need of an external monitor and you want flawless performance, then you may need to consider going down the route of purchasing a dedicated external monitor. Something like a small HD would probably be great. But aside from that, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you found this helpful. We're putting all the necessary links in the description below. But other than that, I'll catch you guys later.